Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on manual color correction inside Final Cut Pro 10. The ability to change color within Final Cut 10 has significantly improved compared to earlier versions, and it's especially useful when you know how to read scopes, interpret what they tell you, and then change your color to really make your images look great. And that is what this webinar is all about. Oh, by the way, we have a brand new subscription service. All of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are available via subscription. This includes all of our Final Cut 10, Adobe CS6, and our brand new Autodesk Smoke training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. There's two definitions I need to clear up right at the very beginning. Color correction fixes image problems. Color grading gives your images a specific look. Today, we're fixing image problems using color correction. Webinar 50, which is called Final Cut Pro 10 Color Correction, explained clip analysis, automatic color correction using the Enhancements menu, Balance Color, and Match Color. If you need those automated tools, take a look at that webinar. In this session, I want to focus more on reading scopes and making manual color adjustments. I'll show you how to display and read Final Cut's video scopes, how to adjust image contrast, which is the grayscale part of an image, and how to adjust image color. When we talk grayscale, we use terms like highlights and shadows. I want to define what those are. Now this represents the range in grayscale value from very bright at the top to very dark at the bottom. This is a close-up from the waveform monitor. There are seven grayscale categories. Grayscale, which is greater than 100%, is called super white. Grayscale values right on this line are called white. The top third of grayscale, between roughly 65% and 100%, are called highlights. In the middle of the scope are mids, or midtones, or mid grays. We'll use all three words. Shadows are the lower third, from roughly 0% to 35%. Black is at zero, and super black is below zero. In Final Cut 7, we never had to worry about super black because Final Cut 7 clamped black levels at zero, but not Final Cut 10. Final Cut 10 allows super blacks to extend all the way down to negative 10 and super whites to extend up to 110. The reason this is important is we can get into trouble if our videos have blacks that extend below zero or whites that extend over 100%. And I'll show you how we can block that both manually and using the Broadcast Safe Filter during the course of this webinar. Let's start by taking a look at a gradient. This is pure white on the left, pure black on the right, and every possible shade of gray in between. To see scopes, we go up to the Window menu, go down to Show Video Scopes. Keyboard shortcut is Command-7. This displays the waveform monitor. Now on your system, it could display the histogram, it could display the vector scope, but the scope that I find most useful is the waveform monitor. To change scopes, go up to the setting menu, and you can switch between the histogram, the vector scope, and the waveform. Waveform shows us everything we need to know about black and white. Vector scope shows us everything we need to know about color. And the histogram shows us the distribution of pixels on a grayscale level. Let's take a look first at the waveform monitor. I'm going to make the monitor a little bit bigger by grabbing the dividing line here and just sliding this so we can see the scope. Notice that we've got dividing lines, the zero, that's black, shadows, mids, highlights, there's 100%, which is white, and super white. And our white starts at 100% and smoothly represents every shade of gray all the way down to black at zero. Well, if we add color into the equation, Take a look at the waveform monitor here. Now we can see something else. We can see that we can say the left side of the image is black, the right side of the image is black, and the middle has got 
some grayscale to it. Now, in the case of Final Cut 10, we can also say it looks like it's got a blue color cast because Apple has added the color of the grayscale value. That's not true of most scopes. It is true of Final Cut 10. But I cannot look at the waveform monitor and say, ah, that's a circle. That could just as easily be a rectangle. It could be a pipe. It could be a tube. Th we cannot look at any scope and say, ah, that is a specific shape. All we can say is the left side and the right side are dark, the middle is lighter. And the other interesting thing about the waveform monitor is that we can say things like the left side, the center, or the right side. We can't make positional statements using the vector scope or the RGB parades because they don't show the same information. So the waveform allows us to say left and right, but does not allow us to say up and down, because down is dark, up is light, even if the lightness or darkness is located somewhere other than the top or the bottom of the frame. This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz store and look for Webinar 71.